Well, it had to happen sometime. Now I'm back on iRacing, I knew it was only a matter of time before it rained. And boy is it raining today for this Formula 1600 Thrustmaster Trophy race at Okayama. Now I'm fearing the worst here, it's my first ever experience of iRacing rain. Even the practice server was dry, so my first ever wet lap was in qualifying. As a result, I took it very easy. I'll be starting from P10, but that's only because nearly half the grid chose not to set a lap time. Now don't expect me to attack in this one. Today is all about being as careful and as safe as possible and seeing if I can survive it. Green, green, green. Here we go then, the lights are green. 20 minutes and Okiyama is underway. I'm back in the Formula Ford, the car that I was so competitive in a week ago, but don't expect me to be as competitive this time around because look at the conditions as we hit T1. There's already a big pool of water that's formed on the inside line, so I tiptoed my way through very nervously. I've lost one position to Harvey Jiang, another to Robert Kennedy. Both of those two started behind me. There's hardly any visibility as we come down the back straight, and there is carnage. Cars up in the air, cars facing the wrong way, cars on the grass. I take a nudge from Daniel Summer to my left. That's given me four incident points already. Really unlucky there because I anticipated that wreck so well. As soon as that giant wall of spray pretty much wiped out all visibility, I sensed something big was going to happen. So I did just lift off the gas. Thankfully, I was able to get through in one piece. Sadly, that bump from Summit has given me a 4x, but the main thing is I am alive. Now I've got to be wary of a potential dive bomb into this corner. Let's look to the rear view mirror. Sure enough, there is someone flying in. That is Andrew Murphy, who is never going to get that stop. Meanwhile, another car rejoining from the left. That is Goa Ayab, who was on pole position. But I'm pretty sure there was also another car in the gravel at the hairpin because Robert Kennedy, who got past me at T1, has suddenly dropped right down the order. So I have picked up a bunch of positions on this opening lap. So many drivers struggling to get the car stopped it seems like everybody's still trying to use their dry line breaking points they're all crazy one thing is certainly for sure I won't be making the same mistake I am going to drive as cautiously as I possibly can here Liam Mansfield ahead having a look up the inside of Gomariah is he no he's not Mansfield going into pit so he must have picked up damage on this opening lap I am is also out of control in front He's just about managed to hold on to it as we exit the final corner. Now, I can't wait to see what position I'm in. I started P10. I dropped to P12 by the time I exited the first corner. But I've surely got to be back on the fringes of the top five. And I'm actually in the top five. I am up into fifth position. And we can make that P4 because there was another car out in the gravel to the left. Christopher Christensen has come to grief. So, incredibly, we're going to start lap two in fourth position. Right, let's go back and check out the replay and see what went down. It was absolute mayhem on this opening lap. We're watching the number 16, Richard Irwin, starting P4 on the grid. He just clips their gravel on the outside, slides horizontally across track, and then all hell breaks loose. And just at the left of the screen, you saw how well I did to avoid getting tangled up in that. I lifted at exactly the right time. Right now, we're riding on board with Liam Mansfield. We saw Liam enter the pits at the end of the first lap, and that's why he T-boned the spinning car in front. Oh, he takes another whack for his troubles as well. No wonder he picked picked up damage. Well, it was always going to happen, wasn't it? We'll see it from one more angle now. And look to the left of the screen. There's me weaving my way through as cautiously as I possibly can. Really unlucky to get a 4X out of that. It may even have been net code, you know. And then at the hairpin, we can see Andrew Murphy at the front of shot making that dive bomb attempt. And the number 16, Richard Irwin, also losing control. He ends up running into Murphy. So once again, I got really lucky there not to get collected. Meanwhile, further in front, yes, in Indeed, there was another car in the gravel and it was indeed Robert Kennedy. And the freebies didn't end there because at the start of lap two, we lost Christopher Christensen at T1. Now, Christensen only started one position in front of me, but he had an excellent opening lap. Got his way into the top three, only to bin it at the first corner. And he wasn't the only one. Watch the number five, Darian Tomasiello, right behind me, also outbreaking himself, as do a number of other cars. There are Formula Fords going everywhere here at Okiyama. Yeah. <laughs> 
Right, back to the live action towards the end of lap two. I've actually managed to stick within a second of Goa I am ahead, but look in the rearview mirror. Fleming Lund is closing in fast. He's shaping for a move up the inside into this left-hander, and I am absolutely not going to defend that one. He can have it. And yeah, I know you're all going to grumble at me for giving away positions too easily again, but honestly, with this being my first race in these conditions, I just want to survive. Lund is pushing so, so hard. He's at a much higher risk of making a mistake, and he's all already made one. Well, that didn't take long, did it? Lund out on the gravel to the left, knee back into fourth position. Well, Lund was a man on a mission. It didn't take him long at all to close back in. Look in the rearview mirror, just through the spray. You can see him coming in fast. Once again, he shakes for a move up the inside. Once again, I am going to open the door, roll out the red carpet and let him have it. We've already seen how hard Lund is pushing and we've also already seen how liable he is to make a mistake. So I feel much safer having him in front of me rather than behind me. If he is going to make another mistake, he's less likely to take me out if I'm behind him. And I'll just move out of Lund's spray there so I can get a better view of the track. And look at Lund, he is never going to get that stopped into the hairpin. Lund completely missing his breaking point and that is exactly why I let him pass. Yeah, not once, but twice I let Lund through. And on both occasions, literally at the very next corner, he made a big mistake. This was the first one coming out of the penultimate turn. That gave me fourth position back. Now, I didn't hold on to it for long. Lund soon had it back. However, he makes a big mistake here. I was just moving out of his spray. I think he thought I was trying to make a move and tried to defend his line, but he got it all wrong. Really costly mistake, that one. It's put him back a good three or four seconds. Right, returning to the live action. We're now halfway through lap five and guess who has caught me right back up again yeah you're right it's Fleming Lund you can just see him in the rear view mirror having a look up the inside into this hairpin now I don't actually leave him a space there but I'm not going to defend too hard at all here I certainly feel I've been justified in letting him by on the two previous occasions. So I'll probably do the same again. He's sideways in the rearview mirror. Oh, he's getting a bit out of control here. Now I am starting to worry. I'm almost hoping that he makes a move up the inside here. Because the longer he stays behind me, the more at risk I am of being taken out. He looked really ragged in the rearview mirror. Right, he is making a move up the inside. He's not got the job done yet. I've got to be really careful on this inside line because there's a big pool of water there. We're still side by side side now he's got his nose in front so yeah i will just lift before we hit this penultimate turn to give lund fourth position so lund up to fourth i'm down to fifth but i'm not at all upset about that i was really starting to worry with him so close behind me so now the big question is can i keep up with him well it's unlikely unless he makes a mistake so we're jumping forward now a lap just approaching the end of lap six and yeah i've not been able to keep up with him he's opened up a 1.2 second gap he does have a back marker to contend with though Harvey Chiang right in front of him but yeah certainly I am not going to be pushing to try and close this gap I'm just concentrating on maintaining my top five position Darian Tomasiello is not too far behind now just one and a half seconds back now I've just posted my fastest lap of the race but it is not fast enough to stick with London and it feels like the rain is getting heavier too. Conditions getting worse. And just as I say that, I've lost the rear out of nowhere. I wasn't expecting the car to let go like that. I've managed to hold on to it just, but I have surrendered my top five position to Darian Tomasiello. But it could yet get worse because look at Nicholas Barashi in P7. He is within half a second now and he might have an opportunity up the inside as I miss the apex. I am rattled here after that mistake. Yeah, what a fright this was. I wasn't even pushing hard. I was tiptoeing around the corner, but still the rear gives out. There are so many pools of water forming on the track surface now. Conditions are getting treacherous. Right, towards the end of lap seven, and it's as you were. Lund in fourth position, Thomas Yellow in fifth, I'm in sixth, Barashi just behind in seventh. And yeah, honestly, it's not looking good for me now. I've just not got the pace or the wet weather experience to keep up with Thomas Yellow in front. He is already more than a second clear, and I am going to be under attack again very, very soon from Barashi. Right, out of the final corner then to end lap seven. What's the gap? Point five of a second back to Barashi. So I'm just far enough ahead, I think, not to be under threat from a move into turn one on this lap. Well, there's going to be a lot of hard work ahead to hold on to this position. Oh, no! Barashi completely out of control into turn one, and I have been poleaxed. 
And this could be race over. I'm surely going to get the meatball flag here. I took a proper whack. Marashi is still upside down in the gravel, so his race is definitely over. But I have not received any damage notifications yet. Have I got away with this one? If I have, it is an absolute miracle. I'm certainly going to take it even easier for a few corners just in case I've got damage. Yellow flag is out. It's Thomas Yellow in the barrier. So incredibly, I'm back into the top five. Yeah, unbelievable. I went from being convinced that my race was over to being back into the top five within about 15 seconds. This is the huge incident that I thought had ended my race. Marashi just getting completely caught out on the brakes. On board with him now. Now we should be braking just under the bridge here, but he is still flat out at this point. He is never going to get that one stopped and he careers into me. I still can't believe how I didn't pick up race ending damage from this contact. Equally astonishingly, I didn't lose any positions either. We built up such an advantage over the cars behind. I was able to rejoin, maintaining my position. And then at the very next corner, I was gifted my fifth position back. Thomas Yelly getting it all wrong through this section. Again, there's no grip there. The standing water is so, so treacherous. So can I now get an unlikely top five in the rain at Okayama? Well, I've got one lap to go, but it's not going to be easy. In the rearview mirror, I've got Andrew Murphy within one second behind me in six, and then Ramal Valapai just 1.5 seconds back in seven. Can I hold on? Well, you saw me give positions away earlier in the race. I'm not going to be doing that on the last lap. I'm going to fight now to try and hold on to this top five finish. Now, this section here for me is the most scary part of the race track now in these conditions it is more slippery here than anywhere else on the track so i'm still gonna have to tiptoe through this section we saw how easy it was to lose it both me earlier in the race and then more recently thomas Ellie. when we look into the rearview mirror andrew murphy has missed his breaking point into that right hander he's out onto the gravel and my nearest challenger has gone Boy, oh boy, did I breathe a big sigh of relief when I saw this in my rearview mirror. Andrew Murphy just pushing a little bit too hard as he tried to claw back that one second deficit and he's out. So that pretty much sealed my top five finish. Just coming out of the final turn now. Malapide more than one second back still, so I'm going to take the check and flag in fifth position. I have survived my first iRacing rain experience. Wow. Well, I knew it was going to be a challenge, and I also knew I wasn't going to get anywhere by pushing too hard. That's why I decided to take it very, very easily, and I've been rewarded for my caution with a top five finish. Here are the classified results, then. And my safety rating actually has taken a massive hit. I think that's a little bit unfortunate because I was probably one of the safest drivers out on track, but unfortunately, eight incident points have taken their toll. And look at the fastest lap times as well. I was one of the slowest drivers out on track. But in these conditions, outright speed doesn't always get you very far. And so it proved today. Once again, thanks for taking time out of your day to join me for this race. I do hope you've enjoyed watching and I'll look forward to seeing you back on track again very, very soon. Cheers for watching.